Glazing is an oil painting technique where you apply thin, transparent layers over top of a dry, opaque underpainting. The underpainting is usually monochrome so that you can focus on value and then add your color in a separate layer. In this example, I used a grisaille underpainting using black and white. It's also common to use an earth color in combination with white, like a brown or a green, depending on the effect you want to achieve when you add the glazes on top. Also, umbers tend to dry faster, and it's important to wait till the underpainting is fully dry before you apply a glaze. For this reason, you might want to use an underpainting white. Of all paints, whites are the most susceptible to yellowing, so often white paint colors will have an oil like safflower oil that yellows less but dries slower. But an underpainting white tends to be bound in linseed oil, so it will dry faster. And you don't have to worry so much about future yellowing because you're going to cover over it. Another thing to consider is some people will actually do the underpainting in acrylics. Um, the rule is that you can paint oils over acrylics, but never the opposite. So you can definitely paint your underpainting in a acrylic paint and then wait for it to dry, which will obviously be much less time than oil paints, and then use oil paints to create glazes on top. Although some people find the technique of glazing counterintuitive, for other people, they really like being able to separate the um, value study and the drawing aspect of the underpainting from the application of color. So even though it's more of a complex technique, it is still useful to beginners for being able to separate out elements of their painting. It's very important to remember that each layer of glaze will darken your painting so you have to be considerate of that in your underpainting. Always make every value a little bit lighter than they appear to you in real life. A good trick is to never use a black or anything darker than a mid-low value. That way you'll never be tempted to use it. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to stop yourself from going too dark in the first stage and then you regret it later because the only way to lighten your painting again is to add white and add an opaque layer. So when you add each layer of your glaze, the colors aren't physically, but they're optically mixed. It's sort of like adding a sheet of acetate over top of a monochrome photograph. Because the light will travel through each layer and bounce back off of the bottom layer, it'll create a glow that you can't get using any other technique. This is one of the reasons why it's a popular technique for painting skin that has a luminescent quality. And one of the added bonuses to glazing is that if you do make a mistake, you can just wipe it off because the layers below are dry and you won't be able to impact them. Although this technique is similar to techniques a lot of digital artists use, it's a really old technique, um, something that the old masters used. They partly used it to save money on expensive paint colors by doing most of their painting in an underpainting and just applying one thin layer of, say, an expensive blue. And also, they were much more limited in the amount of paint colors they had available. So they had to get a little bit more creative with types of color mixing and effects that they could create by using techniques like glazing. Even now, it's a great technique to use if you're looking to save money on materials, but it's definitely a technique that takes a lot of time. So you do have to have an element of patience and planning as you go. It's a technique that's connected to certain old masters like Vermeer, but actually sometimes it's overstated the amount that painters in the past use glazing. And it's important to remember that you can use glazing only on certain parts of your painting. You don't have to do it for your whole painting. You could use glazing only to paint, say, like fruit in a bowl or areas of the skin or something that you think would benefit from that technique, but leave the rest of the painting um, in one layer. Also, as soon as you start adding layers in oil paint, things can get a little bit more complex. Basically, it comes down to each layer of your painting has to be more flexible than the layer before. To do this, there are three rules that you have to follow. The first is fat over lean. This essentially just means that each layer has to have more, not less oil than the layer before. Um, we think of oil mediums being more fat and adding solvent or paint thinner being thinner. And then the other rules are you have to paint thick over thin. So that basically means that you can't start off with a really thick impasto underpainting and then add like really thin layers of paint over top.
Then the third rule is slow drying over fast drying. There's the amount of time a paint color will take to be touch dry, and then most paint colors will take a lot longer to be uh, fully dry, and your underpainting has to be fully dry before you add the next layer on top. So you don't want to use a really slow drying color, and every paint color will have a different drying time based on the paint color and the medium in it. So it's basically good to know your paint colors, know which are fast and which are slow drying and make sure that you use the correct paints for the underpainting layers. So this is why you can't create a glaze using paint thinner or your solvent, say like I use Gamsol as my solvent. You can't use that to dilute your paint, make it more transparent and put it over top of any paint that's below because your painting will just crack over time. Adding paint thinner to your paints is considered more of a wash and it might be something that you do only in the very first layer of your painting where you're trying to like block in an image and very um, uh, washy paint or you're trying to stain the canvas. So it's important to remember that in order to make a glaze, you'll be using an oil medium and not a paint thinner or mineral spirit. So in order to make a glaze, uh, you need to start with choosing transparent paint colors. Literally every pigment and paint color has a different level of transparency. and It's usually marked on the paint tube. It can either be written on the back or indicated using little boxes. Um, if they're filled in black, that usually means it's opaque. Um, and then if they're completely clear, that usually means it's a translucent, um, transparent paint color. Then boxes that have like a diagonal line in the middle are either semi-transparent or semi-opaque. So that's something to consider when you're buying paints and you want to use glazing techniques. It's really important to check the transparency of the colors you're using and buy ones that are the most transparent. In rare cases, sometimes it's not actually written on the tube. Um, like for example, with Old Holland and some more expensive paint brands, they'll actually include like a physically painted swatch on the tube. And you can use that to sort of see how transparent the color is um, or how opaque it is. I'm also gonna include in this video my favorite palette of glazing colors. So once you have a good set of transparent paint colors, the next step is to use a oil painting medium. Like I said, with traditional oils, one of the main rules is each layer has to be more flexible than the last. So this translates as essentially being more oily or more fat with each layer. So this is one of the reasons why a flexible alkyd medium is usually really good for glazing. I like to use liquid. For the transparent effect, instead of diluting it a lot, just dilute it a little with a little oil medium and try to apply it in a very thin way across the canvas. It's like the saying in painting, paint thick, paint thinly. Many specific oil paint glazing mediums will have soft resin in them. Um, these can be popular, but they can also make the paint more brittle and more likely to crack in time, especially because it can be tempting to use mediums like too liberally. Um, and anytime you use oil medium too much, it'll darken and yellow the painting over time. So alkyd mediums are a good choice and just keep in mind to use as little as possible and spread a transparent layer over the surface of the painting. And then make sure that you add a little bit more with each layer of glaze that you add, just to make sure that there's a little bit more oil with each layer. But you can also just select your choice of oil medium to make glaze like linseed oil. You just have to keep in mind that each layer um, needs to dry before you add another one. That's one of the reasons why alkyd mediums like uh, liquid are really good. They dry very fast. Um, linseed oil also dries on the quicker side. If you chose to use something like safflower oil, you might be waiting a long time between layers for them to dry. Another thing to think about when you're adding a glaze is that you can use a much softer brush than you might typically use for oil painting. Um, normally with oil painting, you'll use a coarser bristle brush or hog hair brush. Um, whereas for glazing, you can use a very soft um, hair type like a sable um, or a synthetic sable brush. Um, and it can be in a more bushy shape, like a mop style brush, as opposed to a pointed uh, round or um, a filbert. Although really you can apply your glaze using whatever, but really you're not gonna be focused on a specific detail. You're gonna be spreading a thin layer over um, a large section or a small section of your painting. 
The advantage of glazing is that you can kind of be a bit smarter about how light will either bounce off or go through different layers and you can be reductive in your application of paint. So if you add areas of glaze, you can wipe sections of it away and you can combine glazing techniques with techniques like scumbling, which is where um, instead of one translucent layer, you apply like broken a broken layer of paint. So it's another layer technique where you can see the stuff below, but it's a more rough atmospheric style. Now this video is obviously catered to people who are using traditional oil paint, but you can use glazing techniques using watercolor or acrylic paints. So to glaze with watercolor, you'd use um, a specific glazing medium and same with acrylics, but you can also just use a gloss medium or a slow dry fluid medium to create your glaze. Um, you don't have to be so worried about the rules um, that apply in oil painting about making each layer more flexible. Um, you don't have to, those are oil painting specific. So I wanted to share one of my favorite palettes for glazing. Basically, it's based on a split primary system, uh, except with the addition of two, a cool and a warm green, and one purple pigment or violet pigment. So you'll be able to mix a very wide array of colors. As I said, transparent colors are ideal for glazing, but you also want um, vibrant and rich colors. And you'll see that a lot of glazing colors tend to be also the most modern pigments, like crinacridone reds or thalo blues and greens. They're the most recently invented pigments and paint colors, um, and they also tend to be the most transparent and the most vibrant as well. So they're great for mixing like a very huge spectrum of color, um, but also for glazing because of their transparency. I've included their pigment codes because these colors, um, they can often be named different things in different brands. Um, so it's often good just to check to the pigment codes to see exactly which color it is. So the first color is dioxanine violet, and that is the pigment code PV23. The next color is quinacridone magenta, and that is the pigment code PR122. And it's also the closest color we have to a primary magenta. The next color I used is crimson lake. I think it's also called perlin red um, in some brands. Um, and that pigment code is um, PR149. The next color is Indian yellow, although in other brands, their Indian yellows may not be the same pigment. The pigment is PY83. Then for cool yellow, use Hansa or Azo Yellow Deep or PY65. I don't actually have this color, so instead I used Hansa Yellow Medium or PY74. Next, I used Thalo Emerald or PG36 and then thalo green, which is PG7. Then I use thalo blue, which is PB15. And finally, um, I used ultramarine blue, which is PB29. And this is a classic glazing color that was used by Vermeer in the girl with the pearl earring headscarf. So those are the glazing palette that I love to use and I'd recommend it really spans like a wide range of the color spectrum, like around the whole color wheel should give you a lots of great mixing options. You can just use this as a regular palette. Once you add white into it, it will become more opaque. The colors will become more opaque. Um, using transparent colors, you can get some really deep chromatic blacks. For example, ultramarine blue and um, burnt umber, they're both transparent colors or on the transparent side. Um, so you can get a really deep, rich um, chromatic black. If you were to use this palette as a regular, as opposed to a glazing palette, then you would likely want to add a white into the mix um, and possibly a brown just for help in toning colors. As I said, you'll see that they're mostly modern paint colors. Um, and modern paint colors have slightly different mixing characteristics than mineral colors. I have a video on that. Um, basically, when you mix two um, modern paint colors together or modern paint color plus white, um, the, the value will change, um, but the chroma doesn't change like it does with uh, mineral colors. So see my video on mineral versus modern paint colors if you wanna learn more about that. Um, also, the, you can think about what earth colors that you might like in um, more transparent forms. For example, 
I always love um, colors like yellow ochre and Venetian red for painting skin, but they can also be quite opaque colors. I recently discovered you can actually get transparent versions of these pigments called transparent oxide yellow or red. Um, basically, transparent oxide yellow is the same pigment as um, yellow ochre, PY42, and transparent oxide red is the same pigment as Venetian red. Um, I think that's PR101. Yeah, PR101. And uh, they're just the same colors, but transparent and really useful. I think often you can also get um, a transparent oxide orange, which is basically a convenience mix of these two pigments. Um, so that's something to think about if you're trying to create glazing in portraiture. So hopefully this video helps to explain what glazing is in simple terms and you can decide if it's a technique you're going to want to try. It's one of those techniques that people either love it or they hate it. I feel like I've mentioned it to some people and they just like recoil from memories of art school and being made to do glazing exercises, whereas other people continue to do it throughout their whole painting practice. Like I love glazing techniques. Um, so it really just depends on your style and what you're trying to achieve. But it's a good thing to have like in your back pocket and to just know about because it's actually really cool that you can do this, not just in like digital art world, but with physical paintings.